What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about Dillian White, Tyson Fury, Eddie Hearn, and Bob Arum. I think that the Bob father is playing games. I got my dog here, so if you see me t tipping my head down real quick, that's because I got my dog here trying to steal all the treats. I think that the Bob father is playing some games with Eddie Hearn and he's putting him in some kind of funny position in a competition between ESPN and DAZN. This is just, this is how I'm reading the events that have happened this week and the culminating event being the WBC ordering Tyson Fury to fight Dillian White. But I think a precursor to this was when Dillian White, excuse me, when Vasil Lomachenko was ordered to fight Luke Campbell, right? Because if you check this out, these are two orders by the, by the WBC for a number one contender who's a, a top-ranked fighter to be forced to fight, uh, to, you know, a matchroom number one contender for the WBC being ordered to fight a top-ranked fighter for in a tight, either a title eliminator or for a vacant belt. Excuse me, I got, I'm out here. I got to get used to these bugs being around me. I'll be able to learn to ignore them, you know, sooner or later. But so let's chop it up about that. But before I do, I want to welcome you back to the channel, subscribers. If you're not subscribed, hit the bell icon, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of what's going on. Also, check out our live streams that we do in the morning. Uh, usually start around 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And also, we have a really good show that we do. Every Every Sunday morning, provided, you know, I sometimes I gotta do basketball games with my son, so forgive me for a slight lack of professionalism in that being in that type of consistency, but definitely check us out because we got myself, we got KQKC boxing, and we also got one of the best historians in in on YouTube boxing, blood boxing, passionate uh, boxing fan and historian on uh, OG Boxing Talk. Definitely check out, I want to put a plug in for his channel, Retro Boxing Documentaries, Blood Boxing. And so you can be able to see his Pernell Whitaker documentary that he's done. He's got like a nine hour uh, um, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker documentary that he's piecing up and putting out piece by piece. Excellent, excellent work for us hardcore boxing fans to go back and, you know, study the history of boxing. But with that said, let's chop it up about this, um, about what's going on with the WBC and what's going on with top rank and what's going on with matchroom. All right. So people, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. Most people familiar with the channel already know the names that I'm throwing out there, but there's an there's a chance that some people might not. So just give me review for a second. Top rank is a promotional company. Matchroom is a, is a, is a promotional company out of the UK that is now doing business with the zone and trying to create its, a market presence in the United States. The zone and ESPN compete with one another in that they are two networks that film that, that, um, that provide boxing content that are exclusively sports and, and also have the ability to stream fights live to your tablet, to your phone and all that good stuff. So they are really kind of in competition with one another. Now, you have just this week the WBC with the World Boxing Count the World Boxing Council has a vacancy at the a vacancy in their championships Zeus move away um, a vacancy for the at their at their lightweight division where where Mikey Garcia was the champion but he vacated the belt so we thought that there was going to be a mandatory order between the number one contender for that for Mikey Garcia's belt which was Luke Campbell out of the UK and uh Devin Haney who was a new sign uh, was a recent signee to um to Matchroom and who was the number three right all out of the blue the WBC orders does something I think it's pretty rare I don't I doubt that it's unheard of because almost nothing's unheard of in boxing but the WBC says, no, we're not going to have an elim title eliminator between our two highest rank available uh, contenders. We're going to mandate that our number one contender fight a unified champion in Vasil Lomachenko, who is managed, who is promoted by Bob Arum at top rank. So that was the first thing that happened. And then yesterday, the WBC did it again, where they ordered a, a matchroom boxer's number one contender at heavyweight, who was Dillian White, who's trying to position himself to get a shot at, at Deontay Wilder's uh, heavyweight WBC belt. They mandated that he fight Tyson Fury, who is also now, similar to Vasil Lomachenko, a top-ranked fighter, ESPN fighter in the United States. Now, 
I am not the biggest fan in the world of coincidence. That seems to me as if Deont- as if Eddie Her- as if uh, Bob Arum and Top Rank are petitioning the WBC and and angling for the WBC to get their fighters in positions for championships and as a side benefit kill or damage the competition who is matchroom boxing matchroom is is the as far as promotional outfits go it, the PBC you got to remember is not a promotional outfit it is a it is a network of fighters, of promoters, uh, different networks, right? So technically speaking, or in actually speaking, it's not a promoter. So the top, the number one promoter, single promoter in boxing in the United States is is top rank, with two of the with two top three, top four pound for pound fighters fighting under that organization. They also got an exclusive deal with ESPN, the number one sports nation uh, network in the country. Um, so as far as any individual promoter goes, Bob Arum is clearly the top guy. Eddie Hearn is moving in to try to compete with top uh, with top rank as being the number one promoter in the United States. And as much as hard as I get on him, he's making it he's making a good pitch as far as competing with promoters go because of all that money that he's gotten and uh, the and the uh, the deal that he has with the zone. So it seems to me that Bob Arum is not just talking crap on a stage where he says, you know, Eddie Hearn, you don't know dick about promoting in the United States. I think he's going out of his way to try to get uh, is to try to uh, minimize or limit the success of Eddie Hearn and his promotional endeavors in the United States. You saw it. I do believe we saw that where um, during the lead up to the Deontay Wild, excuse me, to the. Um, in the press conference, the initial press conference for Anthony Joshua versus Dillian versus uh, Gerald Big Baby Miller. Again, Anthony Joshua is a, is a matchroom fighter. He was scheduled to make a series of interviews on ESPN, on top, on uh, First Take, and I think some other like local. However, that works. We have different local stations doing interviews for ESPN. But all of a sudden, in the twelfth hour, right, right before it's supposed to happen, ESPN pulls it. And they say they cancel. They say no, we're not going to do it. We want to build this. We'll do some interviews closer to the fight. Uh, we'll hype it up a little closer to the fight. So they pull out and don't allow Eddie Hearn and uh, Matchroom to use their platform to promote promote a fight that's on the zone. Same thing I do believe happened with the Canelo Alvarez fight and the Daniel Jacobs fight where they didn't allow a lot of press and a lot of talking on ESPN for the fight going on the zone. So I really believe that this Tyson Fury versus Dillian White order by the WBC is the same thing. It's it's, it's part of that competition going on between uh, Top Rank and, and Matchroom or Bob Arum and, um, and Eddie Hearn. And one of the things that I think is in, is um, you know is interesting here is that you also have, and I'm going to do a little bit of a projection out now. Since my theory is that this is that well, number one, Bob Arum definitely petitioned the WBC to order Vasily Lomachenko get a shot at that WBC belt. He definitely did that. That was a result of a petition by Vasily Lomachenko's team, which is Bob Arum. Now, I don't know if it was a petition for the top four, the order, the fight to be ordered for Tyson Fury. But my prediction is that you're going to also see something happen over there more than likely with the WBO and a mandatory, either the WBO or the IBF, but most likely the WBO, with there being an order for a mandatory defense for Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev, because Kubrat Pulev is also a top ranked fighter. And that would allow Bob Arum to try to situate his big heavyweight, Tyson Fury, in a position uh, to for the WBC belt or the WBO belt through, uh, through a fight with Kubrat Pulev. Now, Kubrat Pulev, the reason I say, and I don't necessarily believe Kubrat Pulev can, can beat um, Anthony Joshua. However, if they order the fight, Anthony Joshua has no choice but to fight him or vacate the belt. And if you have a situation where a purse bid is pushed for either the WBO belt or the IBF belt, especially if they can get to the IBF belt, because IBF show, showed with Gennady Golovkin that they're willing to strip somebody if they, don't, if they don't make the fight. But if he doesn't take that fight, he has a potential to get stripped. And I don't believe that Bob, that even with the money that the zone has, that they're going to be able to beat Bob Arum, that they're going to be able to beat Bob Arum in a purse bid. I, I don't believe that. 
I believe that what's going to happen is that Bob Arum is going to, and Bob Arum is going to win that purse pick. So we'll we'll see, if, you know, what 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 happens. But when I, as soon as I saw this Tyson Fury, uh, Dillian White thing, I was like, man, more than likely this fight's not going to happen. Um, because I don't first, I don't think Dillian White, I don't think Dillian White can beat Tyson Fury. So from one angle of it, um, I don't think Dillian White and Eddie Hearn's probably going to risk just having Dillian White get beaten and get put out of contention for any type of belt. And secondly, if they do have the fight with Dillian White, then more than likely that fight's going to wind up on the zone because Eddie Hearn's not going to win that purse bid against that guy. At least that's what the history of, of what I've seen going on with purse bids and Eddie Hearn tells me. So anyway, that's my thoughts on it. Chop it up. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Um, about, you know, what, what do you think all this stuff means? You think the fight's going to be made? Do you think it's not going to be made? Who wins? All that good stuff. Let's chop it up and um, I'll check you out. Peace. <laughs>